Hi, I'm Jamie Tassa, publisher of Corporate Board Member Magazine. In our 20th annual What Directors Think study published earlier this year, public company board members told us that cybersecurity is the hardest thing for them to oversee. Moreover, in our recently published research with RSM on digital transformation, 66% of directors said that cyber risk is a significant concern for implementing new technologies. Today, I'm pleased to be joined by Matt Franco, a principal in RSM US's risk consulting practice. Matt helps clients advance their cybersecurity programs by developing customized strategies that align security needs with business goals. And today, he's going to share some of his hard-earned advice to help you improve your cybersecurity oversight efforts. Welcome, Matt. Thank you for having me. All right, let's start with an interesting fact um, also from our What Directors Think study in which two thirds of boards said that they are focusing on cost containment in 2023. Do you think it's fair to say that cybersecurity investments are on the chopping block? And if so, what should board's argument be to management to consider cutting costs anywhere but cyber? Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's, uh... A very fair, I would say, uh, statistic. Uh, definitely seen a lot of this out in the field as as we're working and consulting with with other clients. Um, I think it's fair to say that everything is on the chopping block, not just cybersecurity spend. Right? It's it's across the board. Organizations are looking for ways to contain costs, and you know, cybersecurity is is definitely one of those. Um, you know, I think we've seen lots of organizations cutting their spend and and some at points are sacrificing uh, some of their protection uh, mechanisms. You know, those things that cybersecurity, IT, the organization have put in place uh, to protect and, and mitigate the risks associated with doing business from a cybersecurity perspective. Um, you know, a lot of these have happened in, in even in unforeseen ways. Uh, organizations may not necessarily be going after their cybersecurity budget, but are going after their IT spend and, you know, un, unfortunately impacting and affecting their cybersecurity efforts with that, be it, you know, tools and technology that are, are in place to protect an organization or you know just the simple um, you know headcount that are needed within information technology groups to do things like patching and keeping up with the posture uh, of the organization, a lot of times end up suffering you know unknowingly to those individuals that are going through and and, and conducting these cost cutting measures. So definitely uh, have seen it uh, and, and have seen it have an impact. Uh, on organizations in a negative fashion. Now, you know, that doesn't mean we haven't seen a lot of organizations doing things the right way. Um, you know, there are things that that boards could do um, to, you know, help management uh, when they go through their cost cutting considerations. Uh, I think, you know, it's it's around asking the the right questions of how they got to their quote unquote magic number, if you will, uh, when it comes to containing costs or you know, effectively managing their costs um, to understand how it's impacting their risk, their risk overall, but then you know, also their, their cybersecurity risk, right? Have you done enough when you're cost cutting to make sure that we're still able to effectively run our program in a way that is allowing us to protect and get our risk mitigated to an acceptable level. And if you are going through the process of cost containment, what have you done to assess that that has not caused a negative impact? Uh, we've seen a lot of organizations that we've helped uh, specifically going through their cybersecurity budgets and finding things that you know perhaps they're double paying for. A lot of organizations may have you know, licensing for a tool that is providing uh, cybersecurity protection that they're also paying another provider or looking at another tool to get those same types of protections. So there are things that you could probably easily find within budgets um, that, you know, maybe are, are double spend from that perspective. 
And perhaps it's just a matter of shifting the tooling or shifting the primary control over to those tools where you can, you know, shave some costs uh, in those areas. And we've seen a lot of organizations go through that where they're looking at their cost benefit, but making sure that, you know, if you're removing a control or if you're removing a technology or removing a spend, that you're still managing the risk in the same way, but just, you know, maybe in a more efficient way. So part of the challenge for boards in an oversight role is not getting too far into the weeds um, on some of this stuff. So what's your advice there? Like what's, what's the right level of getting in deep enough to be able to know the risks and, and flag them versus relying on the CISO to really be managing it and bringing things to the board on a need to know basis? Yeah, and this is the uh, the tricky part, right? <laughs> so I've been lectured numerous times by board members on what the role of a board member uh, is and where and how they should be playing. So I think, you know, it's it's walking that that fine line of getting too involved and you know trying to get too deep into the weeds, but getting the right information. And I, I think it's a matter of demanding transparency. So, you know, where in the organization does cybersecurity report? And there's a lot of organizations that may have a CISO, but that CISO or CISO is reporting up through IT, or they're reporting up through the CFO, you know, the, the individual who is making a lot of the budget cuts and probably has the, the most riding on cost containment, and the CIO who is the, a lot riding on cost containment but also has to run the business in an efficient manner. So I think it's a matter of, of digging and demanding transparency uh, from that perspective is, is probably number one. Um, if the CISO is reporting outside of those lines, you're probably gonna get a more clear picture of you know, maybe the risks that the organizations face because it's not going through those different levels of review and they're saying, yeah, we really can't say that because, you know, we really have to spend this money here. So let's massage the way that it's going to go to the board. Not saying anybody, you know, would lie or anything like that, but everybody wants to put their sugar coating on it. Um, so I think, you know, demanding that transparency, um, you know, getting to, um, you know, the, the questions that you ask. Uh, you know, some of the questions I would ask uh, would be around, you know, how have you determined these changes you're making? How have you assessed the risk that it's going to present to the organization? How have you worked with the business to determine if these risks are acceptable? Because at the end of the day, as a CISO, and, and you know, they're, we're open for argument here, but in my view of a CISO, you know, your job is to identify risks, communicate risks, provide advice and guidance, but you don't own the risk. That risk ultimately lies on the business. So it's a matter of, you know, have the business or has the business been involved to say, yeah, we're okay with these changes and we're willing to accept what the changes are and how it increases our risk profile. Um, you know, another thing might be uh, to get a third party involved. Uh, has a third party reviewed what we're changing to make sure that we're still effectively managing what we we have from our risk profile and then uh, aligning with industry standards and industry best practices uh, as we make those changes. Yeah, so that's a great segue on on the value of a third party to come in and, and validate that the company is taking an appropriate um, cyber approach to the business. So if a board was to, you know, work with their management team to bring in a third party, what are some of the red flags that they should be looking for the third party to uncover? Um, and then how do they prioritize, particularly in a cost containment environment? Yeah, so, you know, one of the, the key things I would say is, again, we come back to that transparency, right? So, you know, is that report going directly uh, to the board is the board using internal audit as kind of the the independent 
you know, sponsor, if you will, of that assessment, uh, I think would be one of the key pieces. You know, as as boards, we receive, um, you know, third party reports, obviously, that are focused on financials all the time. But we don't see that as much from a cybersecurity standpoint without it going up first through the CISO who has responsibilities, the CIO, so on and so forth. So I think, you know, transparency, again, uh, becomes becomes key. Um, you know, regarding the red flags, they're going to vary uh, uh, quite a bit. Uh, one thing I would say I would focus on, though, is whether or not the cybersecurity spend is keeping up with the growth of the organization. So as we look to, to contain costs, you know, there, there is that aspect, but organizations are still growing, whether or not, you know, the economy is, is struggling or not, there's still organizations that are growing. They're still going to be making investments in digital transformation uh, because those are, you know, ultimately in, in some cases gonna be cost cutting measures. But if cybersecurity spend is not keeping up with what the organization is doing and the cybersecurity uh, activities or, or the group itself are not heavily engaged in the digital transformation activities, that to me would be a big red flag. So a question I would ask here is, where is cybersecurity involved in our process in terms of you know, going to market or digital transformation? Is it at the end? Is it after we've already pushed stuff um, where it is publicly facing now, or are they involved at the beginning? And what are we doing and how are we considering their recommendations within our process and our spend? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And hopefully it's not at the end after the product is out to the market. We still see that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so quick take on cyber liability insurance. We get a lot of questions around this. Um, Prices are going up. Is it okay not to renew or is it needed more in some economic political times more so than others? Advice. Yeah, I I would, this is an easy one for me. I would never tell anyone to not have cyber liability insurance, it's sort of like health insurance, DNO insurance. I mean, you go personal car insurance. Uh, it's always a good idea to have it, and especially, you know, in today's environment where, you know, the the average ransomware uh, incident nowadays runs anywhere from high six figures to low seven figures, you want to make sure that you have, you know, protections in place. And when it comes to insurance, right, and as boards, we understand risk, it's all a matter of from a risk perspective, what are we mitigating? What are we accepting? And then, you know, anything that is in that gap between what we're we're not willing to accept, we would transfer. And we're going to transfer it to insurance most of the time. And cyber liability insurance is one of those things that I think um it's it's a it's a must-have, right? Yeah. Um I know that premiums have gone up, uh, insurers have changed the way. Uh, that they are actually providing coverage. So it's just important that, you know, as, as an organization, as board members, we're asking who's involved in the process. Uh, if the CISO is not heavily involved in the cyber liability insurance process, it should be a red flag that, you know, something's yeah. wrong there. Um, you know, if I've had an organization where they cut their cyber liability insurance and they didn't ask the CISO if that was a good idea or not. It was just a cost cutting, a cost control measure, if you will. Um, you know, asking the question of, hey, what did the CISO say about this? Uh, would be a good question to ask. But you know, I think overall, it's it's definitely um, something you should have. How much you should have, um, you know, how you want to structure your coverage. That's going to be all based on your your level of acceptable risk. Okay. Great advice. Okay, so as we wrap, what is one takeaway? You know, there's lots more than one, but one good takeaway that any board member listening should bring to his or her next board meeting. Um, well, one thing. So I have multiple things, but um, I would say the most important thing is to understand 
while cyber incidents are down, and we've seen a whole lot less activity, I would say, in the last year, um, that is now is not the time to take your eye off the ball. Um, so we got to stay, you know, strong and firm on effectively implementing and continuing to build uh, good cyber uh, security programs. Um, you know, and and my suggestion uh, to board members is to make sure that you're staying educated uh, on cybersecurity and you're challenging management on the decisions that they're making around cost containment and how they're still effectively managing the cybersecurity risk associated with those cost containment decisions. Well, that's excellent. And I'm sorry that that's all the time we have, but thank you, Matt, for taking time to share your insights. Thank you all for listening in. You'll see Matt's contact information on the screen. So we encourage you to reach out to him to continue the conversation. And we look forward to seeing you at our next webcast. Until then, stay well.